Okay, so we're back with another video. Um, this is going to be a bit of a different one. Kind of a beginner's guide to GUI. Now the first question I suppose you might have is what is GUI? It stands for Graphical User Interface and it allows us to overlay these 2D graphics like this on top of our 3D game world. Now you'll see these used in many games for loading screens, menus, shops, leaderboards, and even from more advanced developers, even entire games. But today I just want to talk about the basics of how to get started using them and so we can start making our own. So to do that we'll come out of our little test place here. We'll delete what's there and you'll notice that that was located inside a folder called Starter GUI. Now when we're creating parts in the uh, game, we usually have them inside our workspace. So when I add a parts into the game like this, you'll notice they fill up inside the workspace folder, if you will. Well, if we want to add graphics, they're inside the Starter GUI folder. Now if I go ahead and I click on that, you'll notice straight away this new UI tab appears. And if I click Screen GUI, that's what I need to get started. The Screen GUI is essentially a container which I can then put my graphics inside. So I click Screen GUI and then suddenly all these options light up for me. And we've got buttons, we've got images, but for now we'll just add in a text label. And as soon as we click that, we see it appears on the screen. Now, if we want to position it, we can actually click and drag it around. You didn't used to be able to do this in the early versions of Studio. So it's certainly something to be thankful for that we can position it like this. But alternatively, you can also change it in the properties because as we move it around, you'll notice down here on the position value, these will change as we move it around. And if we wanted it to be halfway across the screen, we will change it like that. Now, one of the first things you might notice about the position value for the GUI is it has a lot of numbers in it. It can look like quite a confusing value. Now, if you're familiar with parts, you might have noticed they have a position value and the size as well, and they have three values. These are known as a vector three, and they contain an X, a Y and a Z value, which is each direction, basically like a 3D graph. So if you move one around, you can see the Y value, which is essentially its height is changing. Now, GUIs obviously are just in 2D space and they only have an X and a Y axis that they can move on. Uh, y and the X. But if we look at the position, you notice inside of the X and the Y, there's actually two other subcategories, scale and offset. Now, scale is essentially, it's a decimal value, and it's how far it is across the screen. So if it's 0.4 at the moment, which essentially means it's 40% of the way across the screen, and then we'll put the GUI there, and the Y position is set to 0.3, so it's 0.3 down from the top, and then there it is. Uh, now there's also offset. So if we change the offset value to be 200, then you'll notice it shifts another 200 pixels. So if I set this to zero, the scale to zero, and just have the offset, then you can see this yellow marker here clearly says it's 200 pixels. Now we could position all our GUIs just on pixel value, but this is obviously going to be a problem as soon as we go into another screen device. So for example, if I set it to be 600 pixels from the left, which would put it roughly in the center of this screen I have here, but if I was on a mobile device and I go and play here, you can see suddenly the UI is appearing right over there, almost off the screen. So clearly, it's important where we place it. But that's not to say that you should never use uh, offset values because they can be very useful for a variety of reasons. For example, images, you want them to be a set size if you have a thumbnail perhaps, and you maybe don't want it to be stretched too much. So to reiterate, the position value, which is 
down here comprises of an X and Y sections, which are inside each curly bracket. The first number is the scale, which is the relative position. The second is the offset, which is its pixel position, so 600 pixels. And then the next lot is the Y, so it's 0 0.3 across the screen. And the second one is a pixel value, which in this case is 0. Now there's one last thing which is good to be aware of when positioning your GUIs which is the anchor point. Now if we go back and we make sure that its position is set to 0 0.5 across, we'll get rid of this pixel value. You may notice it's not quite in halfway, at halfway. It's actually past halfway. What it does is it lines up the beginning of it to halfway. So if we look at our anchor point here, we'll see it's set to 0, 0, which, although it might be difficult to see, is actually this top left corner of the element here. So if I change the anchor point to be 0 0.5, this is an X and a Y value again, you'll notice it shifted. If we go back, change it again, and you see it shifts to the left. The anchor point is now in the middle, and that means it's element is perfectly centered now and we can also set the anchor point to be center on the y-axis as well to change that and then you can see that dot more clearly or that square which is the anchor point of the element so now when we're in our positioning we're saying 0.5 across we know it's perfectly lined up so the middle of it is going to the middle of the element is going to be halfway across the screen gui so enough talk about numbers, let's go ahead and make a GUI of our own. Uh, you might actually hear these sometimes called GUIs, which I always found a bit odd. Um, so I always say GUI, just a bit of information for you. So instead of adding in a text label this time, what we're going to add in first is we're going to add in a frame. Now frame is, frame is another container object, um, but it has a white box well by default it does and no text in unlike the text label and we can use this to put things inside of as well so its size is currently set to be 100 uh, offset x and offset y which means it's a perfect cube 100 by 100 pixels we're going to make it fill 90% of the screen so 0.9 we're going to get rid of the offset value and we're going to make it fill, uh, shall we say, 0.9 again. So we're just going to have a little margin on either side, basically. And for position, where is our position gone? We want the position to be 0.5 again. And 0.5. And then the anchor point, we'll change that to be 0.5 and 0.5 and then we'll get a perfectly centered box. We can change some of these properties. The white's a bit ugly, isn't it? So shall we make it a bit more transparent? Kind of color as well. That looks a bit better and we'll get rid of the border size or at it. And now if we add in some text into our frame, what you'll notice is if we drag it inside of here, so it's nest inside of it, it's then limited to the box of this frame. I mean, we can drag it outside if you really want, but that would have to be a negative value. It's zero, zero point then becomes the top left of this frame. So if we set it, which it currently is at zero, zero, then it'll be down here. And if we set it to be down in this corner, set the position to be one, it will go all the way outside because it's using its anchor point again. And one down here would be down there, but it's not outside of the actual entire screen GUI, just the frame. That makes sense. So we'll change the anchor point again. We'll make that 0 0.5, 0 0.5. We'll put it on the, we'll put it up here on the top, I think. We can center it with the green line to help us. We can check the value. It's actually gone 0.499. I 
I presume that's some sort of uh, weird thing. But anyway, and we've got 0 0.0006. I'm just going to be a bit pedantic and change these values to be 0 0.1. And then we'll get rid of the transparency. And we'll change... Well, actually, we're not going to change the rest of these values because instead of just changing all the properties, something you can do is do it via a script. So we'll go ahead and we'll create a local script now. And inside the script, we can say script.parent dot text color three equals color three dot new and then we define RGB values. So for the sake of this, we'll make it red. So 255 red, zero comma zero. And so it's black text at the moment. But when we run the game, it will turn red. We'll change some other things while we're here. We'll change the text value itself. We'll change that to be, uh, welcome to my game. And then we'll also change the font size, script.parent dot uh, it text size. Text size is the name of the property. I'll make that equal to 40. So that's what it looks like now. We'll go ahead and run the game. And when we're in, hopefully, there we go. Red text, welcome to my game. Perfect. Now, one thing you might have noticed is this script we added is actually a local script rather than a server script. Now, the reason for that is that starter GUI, while this folder, as we'll call it, is on the server, when I'm click to play the game, it's not actually the starter GUI that this is inside anymore. The contents of this is duplicated into the player's player GUI. So if we go inside here, and we change the values of this, it will be on the client's device. If you want to know a bit more about client and server scripts, I made a whole video on that on the channel. But for now, just know that whenever we're talking about GUIs, they're going to be duplicated to each player. So if I change the starter GUI while the game's running, and I change the text of this to be whatever, you'll notice, well actually you'll notice it still says label down there. Um, but here it says welcome to my game because once it's been duplicated and the game runs, it then changes it to welcome to my game. And so if we want to make any changes, they're on the client's device. Hope that makes sense. So that's enough talking about boring positioning. How about we add some functionality to this? We'll go back into our UI and click on our frame. And this time we're going to add in a button. So we'll click text button. We'll drag that down here. And all we're going to do is we're going to make it a play game button. So this could be some kind of menu, uh, welcoming the player, maybe give them some rules, uh, be nice, that kind of thing. Uh, you can add this later if you want, but for now, I will just make the button say play game and we'll change the properties up a little bit. We'll make this, uh, this can be red as well. I've changed the text stroke, not the text color. There we go. Do something like that. It's pretty ugly, but that'll do for now. And inside of this button, we'll add a script. So a local script again. And we will say script dot parent and there's a specific event we can we're going to be looking out for which is mouse button one click so whenever this event is detected we want to fire or connect with a function which we're going to call clicked and let's go and write that function now above it local function clicked and that'll be open and close brackets as it's a function, but we're not going to be expecting any parameters in here. So we'll leave that empty. New line. And all we're going to do when it's clicked is we're going to want to hide this UI. So we'll say script 
dot parent dot parent. So the parent of the script will be text button and the parent of that will be the screen GUI itself. And it has this property called enabled here. I'm going to turn that off. So we'll say enabled equals false. So hopefully if we go and play now, one thing to note is the mouse button one click event. I think that maps to mobile as well. Although if you want to look more into user inputs, you probably want to use user input service itself. But this is perfectly fine for the purposes of this video. So let's go ahead and play. And we've got our GUI up here. We'll click play game. And the UI hides itself perfectly. Now one thing we might want to change here is if I reset the player, then you'll notice the GUI will actually reload. Now, this is good for lots of UIs, such as uh, health icons or so on. But for a UI like this, we don't really want it to be giving us a welcome message every time. Now, we can actually fix this by going on our screen GUI here. And down here, you'll notice there's a property reset on spawn. If we untick that, go back and play, we'll load in. We'll get the GUI, we'll click play. This time, if we reset our character, the GUI won't reset and we'll just spawn back in. Perfect. That about brings us to the end of this quick tutorial. Uh, one thing you might also want to be aware of is if you're um, doing a bit of building here, you might quickly find that the GUI is getting in the way of it. Uh, you can just disable this from this little icon in the top right, UI. Click that, then we can build nice and happy. Okay, thank you for watching.